This episode of Outdoor Instructor Chat, I was speaking to Chris from CG Adventure Sport. We were talking about things like what it's like being a freelance outdoor instructor, his outdoor education degree, and we were talking about a subject which came up in one of my other YouTube videos, which is what is better to teach people? Rules, principles, or consequences? I also want to say huge thanks to Chris as well because this is the first time that we'd actually spoken to each other, so it was a bit of a leap of faith on his part as well to like just take the time to be interviewed and have it all recorded as well over the internet. Yeah, it was a really fun interview. There was loads of useful bits of information and it was an absolute pleasure to talk to him. So make sure to check out his stuff on the internet, whether it's a website, Facebook or Instagram, make sure to check out his stuff as well. Cheers, Chris. Right, let's start the outdoor instructor chat. All right, let's give it a go then. Uh, hello and welcome to Instructor 101 for outdoor instructors that want to make an even bigger impact on those that they work with. Today I'm joined by Chris from CG Adventure Sports. Uh, so first of all, thanks a lot for joining us, Chris. Um, no for those who, people that don't know you, like in fact, we've only just really met. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> yeah. if you want to like introduce yourself and yeah, we'll, we'll take it from there. Yeah, uh, so my name's Chris. I'm a freelance outdoor instructor based in Edinburgh, um, but work predominantly in the Lake District, which is quite a commute, but worth it. Um, prior to working freelance, I've worked in centres, mostly in Cornwall, where I grew up. Um, yep, opposite ends of the country. But wow. yeah, moved up here for uni and now work freelance. Great. And uh, is there anywhere that people can find you as, as well um, on on the internet? Yep. So I do have a website, which is uh, www.cgadventuresport.com. Um, I'm most active with the outdoor stuff on Instagram, which is cg right. underscore adventure sport. And then I've got a Facebook page as well, which is cg adventure sport all in one go, I think. But easy, easiest, yeah, Instagram's the best one. Great. Well, we're, with all this stuff, hopefully I'll try and get everything to appear up on, on the screen. And if not, it will be in the description down below as well. Um, yeah, hey, trying to find um, like the names for, for the different like platforms. Blooming nightmare sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm so I'm so gutted that I got like so Instructor 101. Brilliant. Like I like the name. Although I keep rethinking it and then go, ah, I should have done something different. But like. Yeah. With that in mind, like it says, it's instructor underscore 101. I'm so annoyed that the person that beat me to it, um, like they've only done one post and that is it. Oh, really? Oh. Is, are they an outdoor instructor as well? I've no idea. Like, I can't find them. <laughs> I'm just like, oh, oh that is annoying. <laughs> when in doubt, use your own initials. That's that's what I went with. That's it. That's it. <laughs> Straight away, <laughs> doing those um, Right, so... Yeah, like, so I've done a little bit of research a bit. So obviously I looked at your website, trying to find out little bits. And um, the reason why um, we found ourselves talking to you, you reached out, you responded to one of my Instagram stories. Yeah. Um, and it was in relation to talking about rules uh, versus principles, or yeah. what's better. And then as, as I tend to do, I tend to like just share it with the world, put it in loads of different groups. Um, to people that might be interested and then uh, some of the comments I got were brilliant and really in depth uh, but one of the the comments which I wasn't too sure I think it's a bit of a joke but now like I'm not too sure uh, but someone said yeah don't worry about teaching rules or principles it's better to teach consequences uh, <laughs> yeah I was like what <laughs> <laughs> sounds a bit uh arc or what, what would be the word be a bit brutal would be one way to describe that, I suppose. Teaching consequences. <laughs> yeah, mate. Absolutely. But but I've been I've been thinking about it more and more. I'm now like heads in a bit of a spin. So like um and then you respond to that that Instagram story and said maybe we're just scratching the surface. So hopefully we'll come back to, to that question a little bit later on. Yeah, and yeah. See see if we can delve a little bit deeper into that one. Yeah. Um, but before that, um, I wanted to ask you about one of your recent Instagram posts was about, you said like uh, that day, so a few days back, yeah. it's like you're, you can have been 
that anniversary review started off as a full freelance instructor mm -hmm. so yeah just tell me about that uh, so i think like go, going into it um it could be quite a daunting thing. Like I'd, I'd wanted to do it for a really long time. Yeah. Um, for like maybe two or three years. And you know how when you work in a centre and you get those like, the odd freelancer come in and you're like, oh, I want to do what they're doing because they could choose their own holiday and they get paid X amount a day. Um, yeah. So it seemed really appealing from that point of view. But then I think deep down, I knew that I wasn't qualified enough at that point. Yeah. Um, so it's something to work towards. And then even when I got to the point where I was like, oh, I've got the qualifications, I can probably get away with, with doing it. I still didn't think that I'd, I thought I'd have to get like a bar job through the winter or something like that. Um, but what it's, the doors that it's opened just through the sheer number of people that you meet, because you're going into all these different centers or you're meeting big pockets of other freelance instructors and you learn so much you find out about all these places where you can go and work like I, in november i went and worked in amman i never would have dreamt of going to amman i think wow. if you asked me to pu pull out amman on a map i wouldn't have known where it was but went and worked there for a little bit um in november which was great and really hot um and developing as an instructor i think because i've worked in the outdoors now for, for eight years um, and I've learned so much more in that one year as a freelancer than all the time prior to that so yeah. if you're thinking about doing it I'd definitely definitely jump in oh mate completely um, I've to be honest for myself I've for the most part I work at um, an activity center uh, so I kind of dip my toe into the water with a bit of freelance stuff. I haven't done yeah. loads of it, but I can definitely see where you're coming from in terms of like, like it opens a lot of doors for you and a lot of experiences as well. Yeah, I think the first the first season you could have like prepare yourself to not make as as maybe as much money as you would in a secure job and be prepared to drive really far. Mm. Sometimes, not all the time, but that's the thing you can pick and choose. That's the freedom of it but yeah it's definitely it's worth the worth the gamble maybe not this year but yeah but yeah definitely. going forward <laughs> i think i highly recommend it yeah i i agree i think uh i think you can learn a lot i think mm. um yeah i'm trying to think so one of the first yeah i just remember like one of my first bits of freelance work did was that a, a climbing wall yeah and i remember just like it's like oh i'm not sure i'm, I'm ready for this yeah. like yeah i've been do, like doing taster sessions and that's what it was it was a kid's birthday party thing but yeah, yeah i was doing like, taster sessions for like four years or something prior to that like <laughs> so i get this like and it, they're all the same but wherever, wherever you go yeah and yeah imposter syndrome that's I chat with my girlfriend about that all the time. Like sometimes you find yourself in a place surrounded by all these people that you look at and you go, oh, they're so experienced in yeah. what they're doing. And you're like, oh, should I be here? But you're qualified. So yeah, you should be there. And that's, they were all in that boat once. So yeah, you just got to suck it up and go for it sometimes. Completely. Yeah. So has it been like what you expected? uh it's been i think it's been beyond what i expected it to be honest like the people that i've met doing it have been fantastic um i've had a great time like it comes with massive highs then sometimes it can come with massive lows as well but i think that's just the nature of when you're doing something that you really really want to do well in um i'm sure musicians have the same thing and like artists and anyone who's pursuing a passion um but yeah it's it's exceeded my expectations in many ways i think what some things what going back a little bit like saying the people that introduces you to as well yeah i think is like, i think you have you heard this thing that you know it's like six degrees of separation like, yeah yeah, the idea that um, 
like uh like for me to like the, the president of the united states yeah, yeah. like it would be six different six people or something like that yeah to, like six contacts that would mean i'd be able to link up and yeah. to talk with, with the president um i reckon within the outdoor instructor world i reckon it's two yeah i yeah i found myself saying that through the season as well yeah <laughs> completely I mean, you go oh you know this person like us us chatting and we know yeah, yeah. at least two people mutually but prior to today, haven't spoken to each other <laughs> <laughs> so it is funny how it works don't burn bridges people that's what that's yeah. A tip. yeah. and you live and you live and die on your reputation don't you you don't want to you don't want people to think maybe not him but if you've got a good reputation as a person as an instructor then that's fine but yeah it works the other way yeah definitely so did um because you've got a, a degree in uh, i forget i so i didn't go to university so I, forgive me forget like the term terms wrong or yeah no, fine. Or prep. but um so you got a, a degree in outdoor education is that yeah. what it outdoor is outdoor education so, yeah outdoor education so yeah tell me about that because that's a uh again a different avenue into the this industry yeah um to be honest with you, I, I, it got to the point where I was finishing college and I'd done A-levels like everyone says that you're supposed to when you go to college at that point. Um, but then when I left, I didn't quite have the grades that I wanted to go to the university that I wanted. Um, but I'd done I'd, my work experience in year 10 was at an outdoor centre. So I was like, that looked quite fun. Um, can I do a course in that? And I spoke to my tutor at college and she said, oh, I was lucky. the college I went to was massive down in Cornwall um, and it had a university branch to it. And I asked if they did outdoor ed there and she was like, yeah. And then I applied there and then, and it was just me killing time at that point. And then I thought, oh, when I finish this, I'll join the military, but that didn't happen either. Um, and I think when you when you decide to do a degree, a lot of people, especially in the outdoor industry, will say it's a complete waste of time. Don't do it. But it's not. That's I couldn't disagree more with that because it opens up so many doors. Especially if you've got no, I had no experience in the outdoors really, um, but it introduced me to all these different things. I had my my first go at all these different activities was at, was in that first two years at uni. Um, and I think you build, a, you properly build up a back backlog of skills. Like I know a lot of people go on those um, instructor training apprenticeship type courses, yeah. um, which are great and they do get you qualified. And when they get you a job at the end, that works really well. Um, but I don't think you can substitute time. So that two years foundation degree is what I did first. I think two years is a long time to build up skills and meet people and get to know the industry. So it's great for that. And the lectures that you have are fantastic as well. Highly recommend it. It sounds really interesting. I remember looking into it very briefly when I started out, um, or when I was thinking about uh, that this career path. Yeah. Um, for some reason, yeah, I just didn't, do I think at the time I was just more concerned about trying to to earn some money at the time, yeah. Um, and yeah, and then found found another option. Yeah, but I, I, there's always a part of me, especially now that I'm obviously I get to talk to people like yourself, um, and like starting to have more deeper co- like conversations with with coaches and stuff. I I wish I knew more or understood more of the the theories yeah uh, behind things or had more of an understanding um, i think that's the that's the thing with having a a degree is that maybe at those because the people that always said don't bother getting a degree were like center managers that you know the sort of sausage factory type centers where mm-hmm. child comes in child has fun child goes home yeah sort of set up yeah a degree in that sort of situation probably isn't going to serve you very well you might it might serve you well but you probably find that you're not using the knowledge that you've got but if you want to progress past that to 
a more of an educational setting, whether you want to work in a school, for example, um, that will help you get build a more of a career with a respectable paycheck at the end of it, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Um, it will definitely help you with that. Yeah. I'd imagine, again, you, uh, going back to what we were talking about previously, I, I imagine it helped build up, uh, a lot of contacts as well. Yeah. I mean, especially I, I didn't have a regular path through uni. I had the first two years I lived in Cornwall where my parents live. Um, but then the third year, I only finished that last year. Um, and I did that at the University of Cumbria. So I'd gone from Cornwall where there's no mountains, but lots of sea, a really nice coastline, to being in Ambleside, which is not really close to the sea at all, but surrounded by mountains. And the staff that they has, or they have, um, doing the outdoor, and there's more than one avenue with outdoor stuff at university, but the staff that they've got there, the, you'd never find that caliber of staff in a center, like to be, there was maybe two or three people that were MIC and CIC. There was a couple that were MIC and CIC, which are like two massive qualifications. A guy that had level five coach in everything, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I think he helped write some of the some of the coaching pathways. Um, so he'll probably get lynched for that actually um, with the BCU. But um, and yeah, the, and then you've also got staff there that are really well regarded in the like the more academic side of side of it and writing papers and you find yourself writing these papers and referencing your own lecturers and I think there's not many courses that that will happen but I think because outdoor education is still quite small with, as a academic field you're likely yeah. to have that at any university that you go to at the moment so yeah and contacts with your, your student body as well is it's great working in a center you do meet people but you don't meet as many <laughs> yeah 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 there's definitely points now like so obviously as you know i'm sure many people watching like they know that i make these videos but a lot of them it's like it's well it's based on a lot of my own experiences and yeah. and yeah. practice which definitely has its value um, yeah. and then I've done little bits of, of research in the background as well yeah. Uh, but yeah there's always a part of me which is always wanting more of that like uh, the, the background knowledge um, mm. um, and the theory behind things so yeah, yeah I think I think it's great like there's you can do it all the way up to PhD level as well now it's quite quite not that I'm going to do that but it's it is achievable to get really far yeah, it just sounds really interesting. I think it just take it can take us just to, to so many cool places, like just the outdoor instructor world in, in general. You said you took you to Oman in your first year of freelancing. It's, yeah, like, <laughs> like, <laughs> like so. Yeah, like, like just up and up and down the country as well. Yeah, like, yeah. So That's yeah, yeah. It's, different talking to people. So good, so good. Um, all right, so yeah, let's move back. Let's move on to the the reason why we kind of started our, our conversation so um quick recap so we we're talking about uh one of the videos which was talk about what's better to teach uh rules or, or principles and then there's a, a third possible option uh which is about consequences as yeah. a as a teaching tool and yeah i, I yeah i was just really interested I, like i haven't fully made up my mind on, on yeah. this so I just kind of sort of bounce ideas around and just yeah get someone else's take on them. Too. Yeah, I mean, I think it's it's very hard to if we, if we work from the bottom up. So if you start if you start with consequences, I don't think there's really there's not a safe or ethical way, especially in the outdoors where you can teach about consequences. Because I, I I was thinking about it like over the last couple of days. I was like, is there really a scenario? where you have a deliberate consequence that's that's planned. <laughs> I just couldn't think of one without it being, let's chuck little Jimmy off the cliff without a harness on. There's a real consequence <laughs> there, but you can't, you can't do that. <laughs> so I think 
it's something like, and consequences are sort of life lessons aren't they that you learn from going about your day to day and going off on your own adventures that's maybe where you'll learn consequences where if you go on a hill day and you've forgotten your water bottle then there's a consequence there and yeah maybe that can happen in a in an outdoor education setting but i don't think you can't plan it <laughs> not not ethically um, yeah I think it's it's the degree of the consequence as well. So I come at so initially when I was thinking about it, I was like, okay, so I've like as I'm sure lots of lots of people do, like I'm, I'm human, like make mistakes. So and they they become memorable lessons for, for me. Yeah. Um, so here's an example. So. Like I'm con- I'm very conscious about mentioning mistakes that I've made because I'm trying to be like this role model for people. But like, yeah. so there was one time where I'm like, um, I was doing some personal climbing with a friend, tied in, figure of eight, boom, climbed up, got to the top of the wall, leaned back, and my harness just felt weird. It was different when I leaned back, um, and I'd only tied into the the top loop on okay. my waist. Thankfully, like. It was uncomfortable, but thankfully nothing disastrous or catastrophic happened. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, lesson from that, uh, as many people say, always do buddy checks, even with if it's with your mates. Don't get casual about that. Yeah. So, that was a, a consequence for me, or a degree of a consequence. Yeah. And yeah. then. Yeah. So you can look at that as you've introduced rule, maybe reintroduced the rule there, but. Yeah, I don't. I'm not sure. I, it's like I suppose you get the other question to ask is what it what really is a consequence? Because you could argue that that yeah. that scenario there there wasn't. Luckily, there wasn't yeah. actually a consequence there. Um, but if there's a rule there that you should follow, so yeah, yeah there's then, a whole other side of that. It's like I will now if I'm teaching friends climbing like. You know, you do your intro session or intro to be like t- becoming more independent. Like, I will tell them that story as well. Yeah. So I say, look, here's a rule or here's a principle. And if you don't do this, there is a consequence. Yeah. And and then explain what that story is. Yeah. So again, but yeah, you know what? We're probably we are probably splitting hairs over what consequence. Means, yeah, that's the, and. Like it's people are very good at throwing out words. Like here's, a, I mean, rules are pretty. A rule is a rule, isn't it? At the end of the day, yeah. but like principle is also, it'd be quite an airy word. Which, what is what what is a principle? What is a consequence? Um, yeah, I think you've got to really look at it with a and sort of go through it with a fine tooth comb and pick what fits. But then if you're picking what fits you, does that is that appropriate as well? So it's you've, yeah, you've touched on this massive topic area, which I wish I had the vocab- vocabulary to talk about and sound yeah. really intelligent. Um oh, right, yeah, you, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like you say, you can split hairs about the whole thing all day. Um but yeah, like I said, I don't think there's a safe way to teach about consequence. But then you saying that you can give it as an example to kids that you are teaching are you then taking away something from their learning experience if you say i mean there's certain things that you should definitely say like if you go if you're riding your bike wear a helmet because this might happen yeah. but certain certain little things i think there's there's more value to it if it's if it happens through some sort of journey of self discovery than if my instructor said not to do this so i'm not going to do it but I'm not really sure why. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, so I think with with all this, I think it kind of comes back down to trying to give an understanding of, of why. I think, yeah. if, just trying to summarise, I think there's it's all well and good saying, do this, or, but then if you don't explain the reason why or maybe the mechanics of, of why, then yeah. it's not as... It won't stick as well either. I don't think it's as memorable. No, no. 
like is that experience for you i know you won't be the only person that's had that experience but that'll be yeah. what's cemented it in your brain um yeah. i've got i've i mean i've never i've never had that experience luckily but i'll have other experiences from my background that will put lessons into my brain and there'll be more it's easy to draw on a memory of of an actual experience i find it's easier to draw on a memory from an actual experience than it is to draw on a memory from something that you can't remember yeah um, or from what somebody's told you so yeah, yeah. It's such a massive topic area <laughs> so because then so that if you like had like a you know like bronze d of e group there are there are lots of people and they'll be making it'll be the first time they're going to be learning throughout that whole process yeah and they'll be making like mistakes like that's going to happen like there's going to yeah. be consequences if you leave uh if you keep eating loads of sweets in your tent yeah when there's le- then, then in the middle of the night loads of ants come across then yeah, yeah. You know, like you could pr- maybe ad- advise, but like, or like if there's, I- I'm trying to think of like less less things. Like if you leave your shoes out of, outside of the tent, yeah, and then it rains in the night, then you know, like there is a decision. Then maybe as a, as a leader, it's like you can't necessarily. I mean, you could, but you might go. <clears throat> you'd advise people to get their shoes inside the tent so they have dry feet in the morning. Yeah, or you could put them actually just physically do it even if they they just yeah. ignore your advice i suppose you've got it's finding that balance between your duty of care so yeah say to the kids don't leave your shoes outside but if they forget and they do leave their shoes outside then <laughs> that's, <laughs> yeah. that's, that's their fault there's a, there's a there's a thread on one of the freelance pages at the moment that's asking what's the stupidest or daftest thing that a client has done or a group member's done on an activity. And there's loads and loads of bronze DV ones on there. Like a kid bringing a potato for his food because he was going to have chips for tea, but didn't know how to turn the potato into chips. So he ended up having to have his friend's pot noodle and things like that. Um, and they're, yeah, I think they're all good examples of the consequences chat. Yeah. I guess that's, that's just like learning from and reflecting on, on your own experiences, isn't it? I think someone someone mentioned in one of the comments, so, so basically, I'm sure many people might know that I just like every now and then I'll just share that post to the whole world. So like I, I post it to like a uh, a freelance page in Australia. Okay. Um, and I think someone's response was like, uh, if you're just give, giving people plenty of experiences allows people to make their own rules and their own principles. Which I thought in, in itself is a, an interesting concept as well. Yeah. That, that, I mean, if you're going off a pop culture reference of that, have you ever seen the film Zombieland? I have. I, it's and been he, a long time. Has, mate, that is what that guy, Australian lad, has said to you there is that zombie land <laughs> where he's learned from his own experiences and given himself a rule book and the consequences are you get eaten by a zombie, but yeah. which obviously isn't going to happen in real life, we hope. But yeah. I suppose that is evident. That's how some people operate in day to day life, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe that, the audio that to an extent. The extreme, but you're right. Like that is like people are, well, people's brains are are making connections all the time, aren't they? And going, oh, yeah, yeah. if I do this, then this will happen. And that's how some superstitions evolve as well, isn't it? So, yeah. Like, to make random connections. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, yeah. That's it. Consequences are it's a massively vague term, I suppose. Now, if you if you really think about it. Look at yeah. it through the right lens. It is what is a consequence? Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> not me. That's yeah. <laughs> not anymore. Yeah. It's definitely an interesting learning tool, isn't it? I think have you ever heard of I'm putting my neck out on the line here of getting 
crucified by academic people, but Kolb's learning cycle, which yes. has experiences, experiences and reflection are our key points of that, and then applying them into a new into a new situation. Yeah. Um, I think that, like you were saying earlier, reflection, reflecting on the consequence is maybe where learning happens. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Yeah, sticking neck, that's test, testing me a bit there. The cold <laughs> cycle, but, uh, I'm going to have to double check. I'll probably bring up a, a picture of it on the screen a bit. Like, yeah, yeah. Or maybe not if I've got it completely wrong in my head. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've probably got it wrong as well, and I've got a degree. <laughs> <laughs> maybe some homework for both. <laughs> yeah uh, cool um i was wondering if it was all right like to quite a few other people if we move into some quick irish questions yeah sure yeah move on like because yeah like yeah 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 like so you can chat consequences, <laughs> like definition of consequences of is a rabbit hole yeah, yeah. <laughs> Pub chat, i think that falls into <laughs> cool so yeah the Land or water? Land. <laughs> Land. Yeah, I have to because I like mount. I love the sea, but I love mountains more. <laughs> Straight out. <laughs> you know what? I'm really surprised that a lot of the, the people that I've asked, because I haven't done many of these like like outdoor instructor chat things. So like, I'm really surprised that people are very quick at answering yeah. uh, this question so far. Um I always thought there'd be a bit more of a debate. No? So everyone was like, bam, is this well, done? I have, been th- I have been thinking about it. I think like, the true answer is a combination of both in the, yeah. right, in the right mix. But if I, yeah, if I had to choose, I'd choose land. Land, sorted. Cool. Favourite outdoor space to be? Uh, when you ask that, do you mean like mountains or the sea or the forest or do you mean like more specific like the lake district or places like that i know so i didn't really have like a a specific uh, answer in mind like i think if you go for like more if you go more specific like like specific place okay uh wasdale in the lake district is my favorite place yeah what's what's the i'm not sure i've been there well i might have i don't know Uh, wasdale is well, it's commonly used as the start for getting up Scarfell Pike on your Three Peaks Challenge, but it's also sort of like the birthplace of British rock climbing, depending nice. on where you're from. If you're not from the Peak District, then <laughs> it's there. Because <laughs> um, <laughs> um, that's where Napes Needle is, you know, the iconic rock yeah, yeah, yeah. in the lakes. That's, that's there, Great Gable, Kirkfell, all those... Okay. Lot, there's lots of climbing there, and it's a beautiful place. Yeah, I've only, I've, so I've, I think I've only been around that side once actually. Uh, to right. see Scarf Elf on that side, I haven't, I've never, I haven't seen at Nape's Needle yet. No, I it's so, quite. Yeah, I mean, it's on the zoo list. It can be hard to find. Okay, it, it is. It is a cool, cool thing to see. It's also yeah. Rosdale is. Um, it's a giant, it's technically a, a massive war memorial. Call it the Great Gift because it was gifted to the National Trust. Oh, so yeah. on um, Remembrance Sunday, there's always a ser- uh, service at the top of Great Gable because there's a war memorial up there for all oh. the members of the Fallon Rock Climbers Club that died in the war, which I think is cool. That is a, that's great. Yeah, I've been meaning to go up there every year. <laughs> for yeah. yeah, it's just one of those things that you mean to do. Yeah, of course. Yeah, man. Brilliant. So, there you go. So, fill in the blank. So, a good instructor always has? A sense of humour, I think, is the most important thing. Um, Because if it's a good day, then it's good to have a sense of humour. If it's a bad day, it still has some value in a sense of humour. Definitely. That is such a good answer. Like, definitely, like, I think just whether it's just to, to pick yourself up or so you see the funny side of a situation. Yeah, yeah. Like tying into the top bit of your harness. Scary at the yeah. time, but funny afterwards. <laughs> fun. Yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's not fun, don't do it. Like, it's, not <laughs> it's uncomfortable getting cut like, Still watching, amazing, 
but don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like seeing the funny stuff. I think that's that's probably got me through like like this time when times are, are trickier or tough. Like seeing yeah. the funny side of things, just how outrageous something is at the time. Um, helps carry me through through a lot of things. Um, yeah, all that as well, doesn't it? Just yeah. Like, Assuming, that, assuming people appreciate your humour at the time. Yeah, I mean, some people might find me really irritating. <laughs> I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Favourite piece of gear or equipment? So, my girlfriend fired these questions at me earlier on and we got to this one and I was like, I don't know. And I think it it's de- completely dependent on like when you ask me so yeah like cause you know if you go if, say you go wild camping and you're yeah. brewing up in the evening and you're like i love my stove my stove is my favorite bit of outdoor equipment but then the next day you could be walking back up up the next fell or back down to the pub or whatever and it's hammering it down with rain but you're dry so you're like it's the best bit my favorite bit of equipment so the short answer is i don't know <laughs> It's hard to choose. Um, we'll go in my waterproof jacket. <laughs> Good answer. Yeah, you know what? You know what I was saying? Like, I thought that people would like be really hesitant about land or water. That's the one. This is the question that's got <laughs> everyone, like going. I've no idea. I've got. Yeah. Even if you pick the top five, it's, it's all hard. brilliant. <laughs> yeah. I love it all. I've got yeah. three pairs of this. <laughs> yeah, that's why everyone's dream is to dedicate a whole room in the house to your kit, isn't it? it's one day it's going to happen yeah. one day I'll be organised <laughs> we'll all have garages like Tommy Caldwell oh it's going to be brilliant <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah the, the last question is if I wasn't uh, an instructor I would be well that is a good question I think I do something working, working with animals I think um when I was in primary school, I always wanted to be a zookeeper. So I'd probably do something like that. Such a good, that's such a good job. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'd, I ultimately got put off it by my brother saying, you're just going to be a professional shoveler of poo. And that put me off it. But like now I'm old, older, I'm still like, no, I'd st- I'd, I'm still interested in it. But maybe too late to pursue it as a career. <laughs> Who knows? I don't know. Oh, is, I'm trying to even think like I don't know anything about zookeeping like no other than the film have you ever that's seen it. that yeah <laughs> what life of pie <laughs> <laughs> yeah or, the, or um, we bought a zoo we bought a zoo have you seen that with Matt Damon it's a good film it's based it's actually based on Dartmoor Zoo in Devon um, All right. story yeah but they've Americanised it but a great film and a great story. I'll check it out. Check it yeah. out. Awesome. That that's the um, that's the end of the, the quick fire questions. Quick fireish <laughs> questions. Uh, yeah. I wanted to ask like I've asked a few other people like if you if you have an, a question to the to the audience as, as well of the Instructor One One community. Uh, I don't really. I just yeah, just say keep getting involved would be my if uh, if people are unsure about stepping into the outdoors and what it entails then i think do you do your research but then also don't be scared to dive in head first i think that's the best way to get into it amazing i just think that's like the, the perfect way to end this yeah so yeah cool. chris thank you so so much like i've properly enjoyed this it's been yeah a good yeah no, it's the been good that, the yeah. fact that we've never spoken before this, <laughs> yeah that's, yeah how that how that even works so well it's amazing <laughs> yeah. so yeah we'll um, continue really the conference out in the pub i'm sure yeah <laughs> that's it that's the that's the next step yeah conversation so yeah, yeah. um great so with with all this stuff obviously uh we'll make sure there's links to well chris's uh social media and and websites uh internet-y type things I, that's a terrible way of putting it uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh please remember to, to like share and subscribe And yeah, as always, really appreciate uh, anyone that supports this.
and yeah, if you'd show some support to Chris as well, I'm sure he'd massively, massively appreciate it as well. Chris, thank you so much, mate. I really appreciate it. Cheers, cool. Thank you very much. All right. So I hope you enjoyed that interview. I really, really enjoyed that one. As I'm sure you could probably tell. Um, but if you're interested in taking part in one of these outdoor instructor chats yourself, then just feel free to drop us a message, whether that's on YouTube or Instagram. Yeah, just get in touch. Or if you're just interested in asking a few questions, then yeah, again, same thing. Just reach out, I'm more than happy to try and answer what I can or try and find out bits of information as well. So yeah, thank you so much for your support. And if you've managed to get this far, my gosh, you are an absolute star. Thank you so much. Um, if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button. There's an Instructor 101 logo floating around by the side of my head. There's other videos as well. But yeah, thank you so much, guys. Take care.